everyone, this is Sarah from Church Mouse Tours. Now, I'm in Kerry today. We're visiting Inish Ausel or Church Island on Loch Curran. I'm going to talk you through some of the features that you find on the island. You can still see a Romanesque church. A stunning, um, it's broken down now, but it is, was a beehive hut. Um, there's also the remains of a stone dwelling place from the later Middle Ages. We're going to be talking about a man called the Ukeda, um, Amkeda Udunakeda, possibly the son of Brian Baru, and hopefully I'll get to take in some of these very nice views. There's even a sheep on the island. So this stone is very important. It was erected by 1015 because the man who died here, that is the year that the Annals record he died. He was possibly the grandson of Brian Baru. We can't say for definite, but what we know for sure was he was royalty. Now his name was Ankeda Udunke, or Udunkeda. There's a little bit of problem. The kings of Leinster were called Dunkeda, but Brian Baru had a son. His name was Dunke. Um, they ruled obviously very close to this area. Udunkeda could be a reference to Dunke. Now Dunke, he was a bit bloodthirsty. He murdered his own brother to get the throne, but in later life he became very religious and he actually died on a pilgrimage to Rome. So it wouldn't be surprising that his son would end up here. Um, we also know that Dunica, his uncle, he actually became a hermit on Inish Kailtra, which is the holy island of Loch Derg. So her, becoming a hermit was actually a very important part of that family, the O'Briens, who belonged to the Dal Cass uh, dynasty in Cashel. It was important for them to occupy these roles within the church. The cross itself is extremely important, mainly because of one carving. This actually represents the Alpha and Omega, the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. It's one of the earliest that we can find in Ireland. It comes from the Book of Revelations and it states that Jesus was the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. There is other symbols on here. You have IHS, that represents Jesus' name, and then you have XOS, that is Christos or Christ. Um, down here you have, it's the Ben Keda, but anytime you see a Ben on one of these um, monuments, it's usually either the Latin or the Irish saying, pray for me or give blessings to me. So Ben Keda, and then we have his name over here. He's recorded as an anchorite, a hermit who kept himself away from society. And they were known as the white martyrs. They gave up everything they loved for Christ. And that is Dunica. This is a laict. Now a laict, it was a stone shrine usually used to represent a burial. Um, you might know a tala. It's actually tau laict and it was a shrine um, which was actually built for a plague. So tala actually means the plague shrine or the plague grave. Now, this one, obviously someone very significant. It could even be Finan the founder's grave. Um, people would come here and they would do the rounds as this became a pilgrimage route. And here we have possibly a depiction of a pagan deity who played music. It could be Lug. Um, it also, because music was such an important part of Irish life, it could be representative of that. Or, at this time, in Ireland especially, singing the Psalms was hugely important to most of the religious orders. And this is the Romanesque church. It was built slightly later, but it is beautiful. And you can see just all, these are absolutely magnificent crosses, some with original etchings very stylized and beautiful. And definitely as you're looking around Church Island, 
there is a great sense of calm. You are disconnected, and even though the nearest island, Begamish, it is within view, you do get the sense of actually being quite far away. Now this, because it's of such an immense size, does have the makings of a founder's grave. This is very likely the cell where Ankeda, the anchorite, would have lived. You can get a sense of the dimensions inside. Very small, but we know there was a big drainage issue on the island and he had to have a wooden bed which was lifted off the floor. We also know that Dunkeda would have had lit fires and he used turf because there was an orange residue that was found and that um, suggests that it would have been a peat fire. This would have been a beehive cell that you're familiar with in um, Skellig Michael. Now, there was originally um, a wooden hermit cell, a circular one, very similar. Um, it matched a wooden oratory. And the thing that you have to note about this area in Kerry, there were very, very few trees. So it would have actually taken a lot in order to get the trees across. And the oratory then, it was um, updated and they used stone, which would have been more common in this area. The stone was actually imported. Now I think it could have been from pretty local, Valencia, but it just shows that the community would have had to actually get behind um, the hermit who was living on this island and bring the stone across for them. Another thing to note, the stone from this um, hermit cell is different to the one that was in the oratory. So this is local purple slate that would have been used um, that they could have picked up pretty much anywhere. It's also interesting that some of the finds on this island, we found corn stones, which shows evidence that grain was processed here. We've also found shells and bones that archaeologists discovered and were able to tell us a little bit more about the diet. Another interesting thing that was discovered, metal was actually processed here, most likely by the hermit, who probably lived for the most part on his own. Now down here, there was a little house um, that was built much later. But the hermit himself would have probably lived for the most part on his own, and we think there were successive hermits. Um, it's really interesting what they were able to do here. The insulation during this time, so around 1058, it was exceptional. They were actually able to make these stone cells completely windproof. They also were able to dig drains and have little wells. And the level of sophistication, it's not something we would expect for a hermit living on his own. So it must have been an extremely important site to people and he must have meant something to the nearby communities. This is likely the remains of the old oratory on which the first wooden one built by St Finnan, who was known as St Finnan the Squintide, um, this was possibly his church that was later developed into a stone oratory. So to finish our trip in Waterville, we're just up at the Standing Stones, um, very close to Church Island. Um, what these Standing Stones may represent was some kind of sun worship, or they certainly mark the sun, and many people still gather for the winter solstice. Now, knowing that these stones may have something to do with sun worship, and having been in Church Island, and seeing uh, possibly a representation of Lug, the sun god, we can also say that because we know that there were um, blacksmiths on Church Island, 
and the hermit would have acted as a, a smith and Lug was also the god of um, smithing. It's kind of bringing around a circle that Christianity and the prior beliefs were really linked. And now Lug in the Celtic tradition, he's very similar to Apollo that you would find in Greece. Now Apollo, he was later kind of transformed. The first images of Christ that you have very much look like Apollo. And so it's very possible that the same thing occurred in Ireland, that they found a god who in some ways represented Christ and that they put some features and many of the sites that were associated with him um, became Christian sites. So it's not so unusual to see Lug represented in a Christian site and to see an amazing monument like this very close to Church Island.